Well, a lot of people unintelligently only think two-dimensionally. When we think of a line, we think of a conventional human line. However, Mother Nature doesn't draw a line like that. This is Mother Nature's line. However, this is only two-dimensional thinking. Obviously, we live in a three-dimensional world. Now, all space, all magnitude is defined by magnetism and magnetism only. The inner atomic diameter of any atom, for example, which the common idiot scientist refers to as 99.999% empty space, is magnetodielectricity, obviously. The inner atomic diameter of any atom in picometers is the volume, or the air in the balloon, if you will, that defines the magnetism, but we have to take Mother Nature's line further. Obviously, thinking two-dimensionally like this, which is correctly Mother Nature's line, is merely two-dimensional. We must think of reciprocation and repulsion, i.e. the loss of inertia, in multiple dimensions. We were still having two dimensions, but then we're going to expand it into three dimensions. So we not only have a line that goes out like this, from a single point of a loss of inertia, but we also have it going out like this. So we not only have two axes, we have three. Now we need to think of three dimensions. Now we're talking about reciprocation. This is called geromagnetic precession, or the Lamour frequency, a well-established fact, because MRI machines, for example, you can look it up if you like, it's called the Lamour frequency. The average mean on the Lamour frequency is uh, 42 uh, megahertz of reciprocation. So yes, the magnet obviously does reciprocate. Here we're thinking three-dimensionally. Okay, now we have to understand what a magnet is. We actually have two images, one of space, one of counter space. Obviously the magnetic field follows the geometry since we're talking about Fi, or field incommensurability, the actual shape of the magnet. Okay, we have to understand what two things are defining each other in conjugate relationship with one another. One being the toroid, representing force and motion, i.e. magnetism, the creation of space. Space is not a thing. Space has no attributes. Of course, Nikola Tesla was famously quoted as saying space has no properties. We have to think of the inverse or the negative image. If you actually take the negative image of a torus, what you have is the hourglass shape. This is the negative image of the torus. The hyperboloid, toroid, hyperboloid. Together they make up the conjugate nature of what you actually see underneath the ferrocell. Um, first edition of my book, which was published, what, in 2011 or 2012, some five plus years ago, went seeking for uh, a three-dimensional model which would represent my discovery and of course I ran into its inventor Tim Vandarelli who invented the ferrocell as a close friend of mine um, so yes of course we need to know what the definition of reciprocate so yes a magnet does indeed of course obviously irreducibly so reciprocate when we actually talk about geromagnetic precession we have to talk about reciprocation so we're not talking about merely a two-dimensional see a lot of people have very limited minds that are only able to think in two dimensions so when we actually have a force vector it's not only existing along a single plane but along a plane of the repulsion of the loss of that inertia, not merely along one axis, but along multiple axes. So we have this number in two dimensions. And if we extrapolate this out, then we're looking at geromagnetic precession, which is denotatively and connotatively reciprocation. And this is called the Lamour frequency. It's undeniable, it's irrefutable, and that is that shit. So, here we have reciprocation. Reciprocation of what by what? When we say reciprocation, we know what the word reciprocation does mean. We know what it means in connotation. We know what it means in denotation. Most people don't know what it means in denotation, but not getting into logomachy. Logomachy is a really good word. That's a word everybody should know. Logomachy. M-A. My handwriting sucks. At least I can type fast on the computer, right? Logomachy. We need to know denotation from connotation. So, what are we talking about? Reciprocation of what by what? Here we have the hyperboloid. 
this is the geometry of counter space, the hyperboloid. To draw out the hypertrochoid pattern, or what some people would refer to as a spirograph-like pattern that's actually seen underneath the ferrocell, cell, we have to have reciprocation, which is the geromagnetic precession. You know what geromagnetic precession is? Here we have the negative image right here of counter space, which is that of space. We have here the toroid, the donut. What's the negative image of a donut? If you take a negative image of donut, a donut or a toroid, you have the hyperboloid. The negative image of the hyperboloid is the toroid or the torus. This is the conjugate nature of the relationship of the universe. The def definitive loss of inertia. Really, there's only, ultimately only one field. That being force and motion. The inverse being increasing acceleration and inertia. Magnetism is the only real field. Everything else is a field modality. We have electricity. We have dielectricity. We have magnetism. What we call gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. Dielectricity, electricity, magnetism. Here we have force and motion. Here we have inertia and acceleration. Gravity is not an autonomous field modality. All gravity is is coherent dielectric acceleration. Now, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. What we call magnetic attraction is merely dielectric acceleration, which is the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape, which is the geometry of counter space. The geometry of space is the toroid, or the torus, force in motion. It's that simple. But yes, that reciprocation, which defines, gra which defines uh, magnetic repulsion. We have to think in three dimensions, so... Human beings are mostly incapable of thinking in those sort of dimensions. Here we have reciprocation, we have geomagnetic precession, I assume you know what precession is. Kind of like a top wobbling. Geromagnetic precession, right? Here we have, obviously, the hourglass shape. The negative image of that would be the toroid forming the outer limits of the spatial boundary which defines the magnet. This is... This would be the plane of inertia, of course. If you take a Gauss meter and you place it between two magnets, you'll actually find zero Gaussian flux. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. The hyperboloid and the torus. This is the reciprocation. The only way you could actually get a hypertrochoid pattern is everybody would see underneath the ferro cell, for example, which I actually discovered before I even knew the ferro cell existed. I was already well into my second edition when I discovered Tim's invention. Is through the precession, which defines the three dimensional nature of the loss of inertia. So it's called the Lamore frequency. Actually knowing and having adjustable Lamore frequency is the only way an MRI machine works, by the way. It's a definitive, existential, empirical, known value called uh, the Lamore frequency. Look it up. Google is your friend, right? L-A-R-M-O-R. Frequency. And what do we mean by the Lamore frequency? We mean reciprocation. Reciprocation, geromagnetic precession. I don't care if you call it geromagnetic precession. I don't care if you call it the Lamore frequency. I don't care if you call it the force vector of three-dimensional loss of inertia. But it's the Lamore frequency. Okay, look it up. Google is your friend, girlfriend. Lux Iveritas.